This is the Rumble Pack. The big reason why Star Fox 64 is the coolest cinematic gaming experience there is. In 1997, Nintendo released the Rumble Pack, an add-on module for the Nintendo 64, that looking back, really changed the way we play video games. In the 90s, hardware makers were trying to find new ways to bring immersion to video games, and force feedback or haptic technology was one such concept. The idea of providing a force, vibration or a bump to the player through the controller was a new take on playing games, and Nintendo with their Rumble Pack would add a new dimension to immersing the player into the world. The Rumble Pack would be the very first device to bring haptic or force feedback to market in 1997. Sony would follow up with the DualShock controller later in the same year, but the DualShock was an iteration on the original controller. The Rumble Pack, on the other hand, is an add-on device that neatly slides into the N64 controller expansion port and requires two AAA batteries to use. Initially, the Rumble Pack was bundled with Star Fox 64, an absolute classic game that was almost a match made in heaven for Rumble technology. And the way it works is quite simple. The Rumble Pack contains a very small motor, which is powered by those two AAA batteries as mentioned. And what it does is spins and sends vibrations to the player's N64 controller. And the modulation of the motor really does allow for different varieties of vibration levels for different effects. And in Star Fox 64, there are different degrees of rumble. For example, if you fire your booster rockets, there's a slight jiggle. If you take a hit from enemy fire, the rumble pack shakes a little more. Or if you defeat one of the enemy bosses in the game, there is a quite fierce vibration to really give you the immersion of a large explosion. And while it's very easy in 2024 to disregard this as something that's not a big deal, back in 1997, a rumble pack and Star Fox 64 was a huge deal and really did bring an additional level of immersion to the table. Nintendo knew they had a hit on their hands, and third parties also supported the Rumble Pack in many, many Nintendo 64 games, with a total of over 200 titles, both first and third party games, supporting the Rumble Pack. And there are some really great standouts. For example, Star Fox 64 obviously is probably the killer app when it comes to Rumble Pack support, but even games such as GoldenEye 007 had very subtle use of rumble that was quite welcome. For me, it's very hard to play GoldenEye 007 without having rumble and having that silence pistol force feedback. And even games that didn't support rumble because they were released before the rumble pack were also subsequently updated to provide rumble support. Now opening up the device, you can see that there's really not much to the rumble pack at all. There is a small circuit board with a chip, diode, resistors, and two wires connected to the rumble motor. And that's really about it. So how do games interface with the Nintendo 64 Rumble Pack to trigger an effect? Well, let's take a closer look. The way it works is quite simple. The Nintendo 64 controller expansion slot has 16 address and 8 data lines to handle its communications to the transfer pack, memory pack, and of course the Rumble Pack. And in the case of the Rumble Pack, only two address bits are used. These bits determine if the rumble pack is enabled, in other words, if the motor is spinning or disabled, if the motor is turned off. The rumble pack can be detected by probing address hexadecimal 8000. So the developer really only needs to be aware of three things. One, is the rumble pack plugged in? Two, turning on the rumble motor? And three, turning off the rumble motor. And this can be confirmed if we look at the documentation for LibDragon, which is an open source Nintendo 64 SDK that shows the subsequent functions for turning off and on the rumble motor. Now it's important to note here that in comparison, the PlayStation DualShock controller has dual motors that were different in size. They can be independently turned off and on and also provide various levels of strength but the Nintendo 64 Rumble Pack only had one setting, and when you turned it on, it would always vibrate at the same amount. But developers would make clever use of timers to get different modulations out of the Rumble Pack. And for this, I decided to investigate myself and write a very simple homebrew application to enable the Rumble Pack and to see what type of effects I could generate. And the results here are quite interesting. Okay, so rather than me just talking to you guys about Rumble Pack and how it works, let's take a look at a real world example. This is a homebrew program that I've written myself using LibDragon, which is a really awesome open source software development kit for the Nintendo 64. 
and I'll leave a link to LibDragon in the description below if you want to learn how to program your own N64 applications, homebrew and games. But as you can see, this is a very simple example. And what we have here is just a spinning cube. Now, what I can do is with the Nintendo 64 controller, I can use the analog stick to zoom in and out, as you can see, and I can also rotate it or, you know, affect the rotation of the cube as well. So this is pretty basic stuff, right? Spinning cube, no big deal. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is if we approach the cube and collide with it, you'll see that the screen turns white or it flashes white momentarily. And this is a visual cue to let the player know that you've collided with a wall or you've collided with some type of geometry just to, you know, let the user know that you can't go any further, right? But one of the things that you'll notice here is it's saying, please connect to Rumble Pack. And what we've done is I've actually added Rumble Pack support to this little application as well. So if we plug in our Rumble Pack and you'll see that it gets detected immediately. Now, once the Rumble Pack is inserted, if I approach the cube and collide with it, there is a slight jolt on the controller giving a little bit more immersion than we had previously. And this is a really effective use of how Rumble works. Now on the Nintendo 64, there was not really much you could do as far as controlling the amount of Rumble itself. There was only two options that you had and that was either turning the Rumble motors on and turning them off. Now when I say motors, I should actually say motor because there's only one motor installed in the N64 Rumble Pack and there is only one setting, either on or off. So it's a very kind of binary type approach. At the time, the Rumble Pack was a game changer and even though it was an optional add-on, game console manufacturers began to take notice and incorporate Rumble into their hardware. Sega would introduce the Jump Pack, also known as the Vibration Pack in Europe for the Dreamcast and the original Xbox in 2001 introduced dual rumble motors on day one with the original Duke controller. The Nintendo GameCube would also offer rumble with the stock controller at launch. But even with its very limited API, developers would come up with many unique and interesting ways to support the Nintendo 64 rumble pack in games. As mentioned, by controlling the amount of rumble by using timers, you can effectively replicate the strength of the motors. Now I've made a slight adjustment to the program to give it more of a suspense, sort of psychological horror type approach, where basically if you think about a game that has some type of jump scare or psychological horror game, where you approach an enemy, you can see that the screen kind of flashes it's kind of like a heartbeat type sensor. And as you kind of get closer to the object, you can see it gets faster and faster to kind of give you that sense of, you know, fear and uncertainty, right? And I've also got the rumble pack motor kind of dialed in at the same time as the flash. And it really kind of gives you that sensation of just fear and dread. Now, whether you believe it to be an oversight of engineering or not really is up to interpretation, but Nintendo did have a limitation with the Rumble Pack, and that was you could only ever have one of a controller pack, a transfer pack, or a Rumble Pack inserted at any given time. This was because there was only room for one of these expansions per controller. Now, there was some workarounds for this. Notably, third parties would come up with their own designs. The Tremor Pack Plus was a two-in-one memory card and Rumble Pack combo. And this was something that some third parties embraced and offered as a solution. Nintendo also provided an alternative where you could provide an expansion pack into a different controller port and still use the Rumble Pack for the main controller. Now the last interesting discovery about the Rumble Pack, even though it does require two AAA batteries, there is actually a hardware mod that you can do to draw power from the Nintendo 64 itself and remove the batteries altogether. And for those who are interested in the source code to the test application that I built previously, you can compile it up and test it out yourself and I'll have a GitHub page if you want to check it out. Now there are some things that you'll need, either a real Nintendo 64 and an EverDrive cartridge or an emulator such as Ares or Simple64. And of course you'll need to have LibDragon installed on your machine first as a prerequisite. And I'll leave a link to LibDragon in the description below. 
In the end, the Nintendo 64 Rumble Pack, while it was an optional accessory, it's an overlooked piece of hardware that in my opinion is a must own and it really kickstarted what was possible when it came to providing haptic technology. These days we have HD rumble and DualSense technology in the PlayStation 5 and I'm always very excited about the future of haptic technology in up and coming consoles. But for now guys, we are going to leave it here for today's episode. Let me know your thoughts about the Nintendo 64 Rumble Pack in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.